This, uh, this committee will come to order. Uh, pursuant to notice today, we uh, mark up eight different measures, and I'm going to ask the members to take their seats. I want to begin by thanking all of our committee members, and I want to thank the staff, too, on both sides of the aisle, for the extensive preparatory work that went into today's markup, including those subcommittees that held their own markups. Without objection, all members may have five days to submit statements for the record on any of today's business. And I now call up H.R. 4347, the Turkey Christian Churches Accountability Act. Without objection, Royce Amendment 117 in the nature of a substitute, which was provided to all offices on Tuesday morning, will be considered base text for purposes of markup and is considered read and open for amendment at any point. After opening remarks by myself and the ranking member, I will recognize other members seeking to speak on the bill before moving to any amendments, and I now recognize myself to speak. Uh, members, in the midst of a turbulent Middle East lies Turkey, a democratic nation that, despite its Muslim majority, has historically bridged East and West, Christian and Muslim worlds. I have long been concerned that this balance is shifting as Christian heritage sites in Turkey deteriorate and disappear in the face of hostile government policies. Despite optimistic claims by Turkish leaders in 2011 that a revised law would allow all church properties to be returned to the rightful owners within a year, three years later, most of those properties remain unreturned. Despite the Turkish government's numerous promises to reopen, to reopen the um, Halki Seminary, that seminary remains closed. Of course, no seminary, no sem sem uh, nobody then to practice the faith, no future church. Recently, two Byzantine Orthodox churches previously expropriated and turned into museums those two former Byzantine churches have been converted into mosques by the Turkish Directorate General of Foundations. There is even legislation before the Turkish Parliament to convert the landmark Hagia Sophia in Istanbul into a mosque. Hence the timeliness of this resolution. As a beacon for religious freedom around the world, and having an interest in seeing Turkey maintain its secular tradition, its respect for freedom of religion, the U.S. must hold Turkish leaders to their promises. By pa passing H.R. 4347, the U.S. will send a clear message to Turkey that it must return church properties to their rightful owners while providing an objective measure of its progress. I would like to thank Congressman Gus Belarakis for his contributions to this bill. And without objection, we'll submit his prepared statement for the record. And I urge my colleagues to, some, to support this important bill. I now recognize the ranking member for any remarks uh, on today's uh, marks, markups that he might want, wish to make. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for holding this markup of H.R. 4347, the Turkey Christian Churches Accountability Act. I commend you for introducing this important legislation, and I am pleased to be the lead Democratic co-sponsor. In the last century, thousands of Christian properties in Turkey have been confiscated by successive Turkish governments. The same has happened in northern Cyprus since the Turkish invasion in 1974. Recently, Turkey has returned some properties, but many cases remain unresolved. Clearly, more needs to be done. H.R. 4347 directs the Secretary of State to provide Congress with an annual report through the year 2021 on the status of stolen, confiscated, and otherwise unreturned Christian churches, places of worship, and other properties in Turkey and northern Cyprus. The report should include a comprehensive listing of all properties claimed to have been removed from their rightful Christian church owners and should describe all engagement over the previous year by State Department officials with Turkish representatives. This bill also mandates that the report be included 
in the State Department's annual International Religious Freedom Report and in the country reports on human rights practices. I want to uh, acknowledge um, two uh, visitors here today who are in the audience, um, Archbishop uh, Bikin Ikazian and, and Bishop Anushvan Tanilian. I hope I didn't mess the names up too much, but we welcome you here, gentlemen. In this context, let me take a moment to express my concern about recent disturbing anti-democratic trends in Turkey. Over the past several years, we've seen a lot of red flags, questionable trials of political opponents, increased media censorship, propaganda blaming foreigners, and in particular Jews in Israel, for domestic problems, increase of government control over various state institutions, including the judiciary. As Mr. Keating and I wrote in a recent letter to the editor and the economist, the current government of Prime Minister Erdogan is eroding Turkish democracy. I ask unanimous consent that the letter be included in the record of today's markup. Without, ob without objection. While I have concerns about Turkey's current course, we should also take note of the bright spots. Negotiations to resolve the 30-year Cyprus dispute are moving along. Ending the division of Cyprus is critical for stability in the eastern Mediterranean and for prosperity on the island. Also, Ankara's vitriol towards Israel has diminished somewhat in recent months. This provides hope that reconciliation between the countries might not, might not be too far off. Turkey and the United States have a long history as NATO allies and partners. Our relationship is strongest when it is based on our shared values, democracy, human rights, tolerance, and justice. When Turkey's commitment to those values is called into question, it damages our partnership and it hampers Turkey's progress as a free and prosperous country. One clear way Turkey could reaffirm its commitment is by returning confiscated and stolen church properties to their rightful owners. So, Mr. Chairman, I hope H.R. 4347 will bring attention to this important issue and make it clear to Turkey that it needs to do more to resolve the longstanding and legitimate claims of the Christian churches. I urge my colleagues to support this legislation. And once again, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for holding the markup. Thank you, Mr. Engel. Are there any members to, who wish to speak on the underlying bill? Mr. On the underlying bill, Mr. Rohrbacher. Go ahead. I just would like to uh, commend you, Mr. Chairman, uh, for bringing this legislation. And uh, let me just say that I uh, share the concerns that were just voiced by our ranking member, Mr. Engel. Uh, there are some disturbing trends in Turkey. Uh, and while we recognize that Turkey has made uh, long-term progress over the last uh, 20 and 30 years, uh, over the last few years, uh, there's been some uh, re really reason for concern here, and that people who, are, who wish Turkey well uh, uh, need to make sure we're paying attention and that the, those trends, the short-term trends that we've seen, uh, uh, do not continue in the wrong direction. And finally, one last point about the specific nature of the legislation that we're, that we're dealing with today. Mr. Chairman, I agree with you totally on the, the substance of this bill. We are expressing our concern about properties uh, that are taken that also have very significance uh, as to the very nature of, uh, of the government and the nature of, uh, of the decision making that's going on in that part of the world. Uh, I would just suggest that as we pass this, with my strong support, that we do note that there are probably properties in surrounding countries, like Greece, for example, uh, that belong uh, to the Turkish tradition uh, that are, need to be addressed as well. And uh, people need to respect each other's rights. And uh, it's not, we are demanding today that uh, the, the rights of Christian churches be respected in Turkey. I would hope that we respect the rights of uh, Islamic and Turkish institutions uh, in nearby countries such as Greece. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Cicilline. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank you and Ranking Member Engel for your continued commitment to working across the aisle and marking up legislation to benefit the American people. I'm happy to see forward momentum on a number of bills 
that I've co-sponsored. Uh, it's the responsibility of Congress to prevent terrorist organizations like Hezbollah from growing stronger, to emphasize the importance of our relationship with Moldova, and to express our concern about the timeliness of adoption processes from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, but I'd like this morning to speak uh, particularly in support of H.R. 4347, the Turkey, Turkey Christian Churches Accountability Act, which rightly calls out Turkey for the theft of Christian churches, religious artifacts, and religious artwork. The United States was founded on the principles of religious liberty and freedom, and the respect for religious freedom must be central to the values and ideals that we promote all over the world. Christian communities in Turkey have long suffered from the destruction and confiscation of their holy sites the forced closure of their theological schools, and restrictions on their right to worship. There have even been reports that Turkish people are prevented from praying in their own churches. Continued persecution of the vulnerable Christian minority in Turkey threatens the survival of their religious tradition. In the 112th Congress, I was proud to work with Ranking Member Berman to offer an amendment during the markup of the Foreign Relations Authorization Act, which called on Turkey to end its repression of its Christian minority and to return stolen churches to their rightful owners. More specifically, the amendment stated that Turkey should end all forms of religious discrimination, allow the rightful church and lay owners of Christian church properties to organize and administer prayer services, religious education, clerical training, community gatherings, and social services, and return to their rightful owners all Christian churches, places of worship, and properties including artwork, relics, and other artifacts. The amendment was overwhelmingly adopted by about a 43 to 1 in committee and became part of the underlying bill which was passed by the House Committee on Foreign Affairs. This April, I had the pleasure of visiting Armenia on a congressional delegation trip with Chairman Royce and Ranking Member Engel, as well as several other colleagues. On that trip, I was disturbed to hear more on the ground about the persecution of Christians in Turkey and the desecration and fundamental lack of respect for Christian holy sites. Uh, more than 2,000 properties destroyed, reused for things like museums, storage, and even a gas station. Today, I'm proud to continue advocating for religious freedom in Turkey and urge support of this important bill. Again, I commend you, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member Engel, for moving these important pieces of legislation. I look forward to their passage. I thank you, and I yield back. Thank you. Uh, we go now to Mr. Sirius. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for marking up H.R. 4347, the Turkey Christian Churches Accountability Act in order to ensure religious freedom for all faith in Turkey. Christians in Turkey and Turkish occupied Northern Cyprus deserve our assistance in ensuring that they can freely practice their faith in houses of worship without fear of hindrance or restrictions. Since, early, since the early 20th century, thousands of Christian properties have been confiscated, desecrated, and otherwise taken from their owners in Turkey by the Turkish government and since the 1970s in Northern Cyprus. I have personally been to Turkish occupied Northern Cyprus and seen the devastating destruction to these churches firsthand. It is unacceptable that Turkey has yet to return some of these properties. For example, the Halki Theological School, the main seminary of the Economical Patriarch of Constantinople has been closed since 1971. Mr. Chairman, a century is much too long for violations of religious freedom to go unanswered. And I am pleased that by supporting H.R. 4347, a message will be sent to Turkey that the United States does not stand for such intolerance. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Meeks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I want to thank you and Mr. Engel for working in a bipartisan fashion uh, to address actually some of the concerns that I've had with uh, H.R. 4347, uh, because I believe that there has to be balance, et cetera. But, you know, I just remain apprehensive and, and uh, I, I'll have to oppose it uh, simply because, you know, not because I don't have concerns. I do have concerns. I have concerns of the status of stolen and confiscated Christian property in Turkey. For example, I'm concerned about the continued closure of the Hauke the Theological Seminary an important Greek Orthodox educational institution in Turkey for training for one. Uh, but I think we did the right thing when Congress directed the State Department to carefully monitor the situation in Turkey, which they have been doing. Uh, and when I looked at the 2013 State Department Religious Freedom Report, it indicated that Turkey 
has been responsive to some of the calls to return stolen and, expro and expro expropriated Christian property. And we need to, maybe we need to go further, but how do we do it? And what do we do? And how do we make sure that things are balanced in the best way to work forward with uh, an individual who's been a strong ally of the United States? You know, this comes at a time when we are partnering closely with Turkey on issues that are critical to the U.S. global interests. At this very moment, Turkey is working to secure the release of 80 of its citizens recently taken hostage by ISIS during the insurgents in Iraq. Uh, just a month ago, President, Vice President Biden indicated during a monumental visit to Cyprus that after a two-year hiatus, uh, talks were on the verge of speeding up. That's something that I think that needs to be highlighted and we should also talk about. I also, uh, in trying to make a decision on how I was going to and what I was going to do on this particular bill, you know, talked and, and, and asked the State Department where we were, and they say this bill will probably or could cause tension between U.S.-Turkey relations as well as being burdensome on the departments so that they can do the very thing that we've directed them to do. So, uh, again, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I thank you for working on this bill and trying to, uh, to, to alleviate some of my concerns. Uh, I just think that uh, at, as we go forward right now, we need a little more balance. We've got to make sure that uh, we, uh, Turkey has been an ally that we're working with, and very important ally in the region, and, and I think that this sends the wrong message at the wrong time. I yield back to balance my time. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Connolly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to, first of all, say that you, Mr. Chairman, and, and Mr. Engel have uh, conducted this uh, committee in your tenure in a way that uh, fosters comedy and civility, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate the attempt we've had in the last two days with our staff trying to work together to see if we could modify the language of uh, this resolution uh, to make it mutually acceptable. Unfortunately, we uh, were not able to do that, and as you know, Mr. Chairman, I will be offering uh, a substitute amendment that expresses our concerns uh, about these issues, but in what I consider a more balanced way. The current resolution in front of us is not about whether you favor the return of Christian properties. I favor, all of us favor that. All of us want to see more progress in Turkey. This resolution shortchanges the progress that's been made. Over 800 properties worth $1.5 billion. The restoration of liturgical services in some uh, some religious facilities, uh, some very significant religious facilities. I am fearful that in our haste to make a statement that provides understandable comfort to our constituents, we are going to rupture one of the most important bilateral relationships we have right now in one of the most sensitive parts of the world. Turkey isn't a perfect country, neither are we. I know. I come from a Roman Catholic tradition. Catholics suffered enormous discrimination in this country for a long time. But are we willing to junk the relationship with Turkey we need right now? If we're looking at any kind of intervention in Iraq, we need Turkey. Turkey has taken in one million refugees, unsung. Enormous act of generosity in that region. Turkey's strategically in a place where it is, as an ally, more important than ever for the United States of America. As we speak, Turkey's had almost 80 Turkish nationals, including diplomats and truck drivers, kidnapped by ISIS in Mosul. We're going to pretend none of that happened and none of that's about to happen. We're going to make a statement as if Turkey were a country that is at the very beginning of evolution and needs to be lectured by us. And the consequences we will not examine because we're determined to do something else. We are the House Foreign Affairs Committee. We are the committee that Congress counts on to show judicious exercise of judgment, pondering and weighing and balancing consequences. The consequences of the resolution as worded, words matter, 
I guarantee you will rupture the relationship with Turkey. And by the way, if our object is to get Turkey to show more progress, and I share in that object, this language will only backfire. They have elections pending. We're politicians. A politician in Turkey is going to use this resolution to say, I'm willing to stand up to the United States of America. I'm not going to be bullied. I'm not going to be lectured like we're some tin horn dictatorship here in Turkey when we're not. Turkey's not a perfect democracy, but it is an evolving democracy, and it's one we want to encourage to turn westward, to open up, to liberalize even more than they have. We want a pluralistic, secular society in Turkey. It is the only such in the Muslim world. To treat it with such disrespect in the language included in this resolution is bound, bound to have negative effects in Turkey. And all of the goals I think all of us share in this committee will in fact be set back for a cause that's noble but for a resolution that's worded in a way that can only be calculated to inflame Turkey, Turks, and the politics of Turkey, and do terrible damage to the bilateral relationship between the United States and Turkey. I urge my colleagues, I'm going to offer a resolution that I think is more balanced, that recognizes the problem, but also says <laughs> they've made a lot of progress, and let's move forward, let's encourage them. If you want to vote as a statement that more progress is needed on this subject and that you're on record. My, my substitute gives you that opportunity, but I pray my colleagues look at the wording of this resolution. I thank the chairman. Well, I, um, I thank the gentleman. The chair, the chair is going to recognize himself, and uh, especially in as much as we worked very carefully on the wording in this resolution, I would just remind the members here that this bill addresses an issue that has frequently been raised by the United States in the past, including at the highest level by President Obama, including raised by our Vice President, Joe Biden, including an issue which has been raised by Secretary Kerry. It has also been raised by our European allies. At none of these previ previous times has there been any deterioration in our relations or levels of cooperation with Turkey. In fact, the opposite has been true. During or immediately following these dialogues, the Turkish government has made positive steps on property returns. We now face a situation where things are sliding in the opposite direction. And if we do not reassert this principle, we will find in all likelihood, a, an acceleration of a trend which will not be reversible. And I think we also have to disabuse ourselves of the notion that every choice that Turkey makes is in response to U.S. actions. Turkey is a mature, sovereign state. It evaluates its relationships and cooperation with other countries based on its calculus of what is in Turkey's best interests, not solely in reaction to U.S. measures, certainly not solely in re reaction to a report by the House of Representatives. Primary examples of this, uh, one I'd give you, uh, was in 2010 when Turkey voted against the U.S. and the U.N. Security Council on Iran sanctions. That had to do with Turkey's own calculus of its relationship with Iran. These were, this is a significant action by Turkey, and um, it wasn't in response to any congressional action. Um, it is clear that maintaining close cooperation with the United States on Iraq and Syria is in fact in Turkey's best interest. Should Turkish leaders choose to point to our rising of this long-standing issue in which they're moving in the opposite direction, if, if they point to that, this well-known religious freedom issue, an issue they themselves have repeatedly promised to correct as the reason to cut off security cooperation, as I, I think was implied here, then it would raise legitimate questions about their commitment to church property returns 
and where security cooperation with the U.S. weighs in their decision-making progress process. But I think at the end of the day, um, uh, because the President, the Vice President, the um, Secretary of State are all weighing in with the same intention that we have here, uh, we need to do the same. <clears throat> and with that said, uh, I'm going to recognize Mr. Smith of New thank Jersey. Thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I want to congratulate you and thank you for this extremely important resolution. It's timely. It is worded in such a way, I think, that it, it strongly encourages and admonishes uh, Ankara to do the right thing. And you even point out in the resolution, you and the ranking member, uh, that there have been some aspects of pros uh, progress, uh, but it doesn't even come close, frankly, to where they ought to be. Let me just say to my friends and colleagues who, who unfortunately, the State Department for years has always taken the view that we do not speak uh, about human rights in a substantive way, even though the Human Rights Report um, couldn't be clear about those rights violations. I'm the one who chaired the Armenian Genocide hearing in this room years ago. Uh, we had a Turkish ambassador come and testify, and he threatened us right from the witness table that if you bring up an Armenian Genocide a resolution, we'll take away your base in Incirlik. Uh, that kind of friend in the soft underbelly of NATO uh, certainly underscores a weakness uh, and if that has a chilling effect on our ability to speak about human rights, shame on us. Let me also point out that today is Torture Victims Day. Uh, I've written four laws called the Torture Victims Relief Act. I'm reintroducing a reauthorization for that legislation today, and I hope friends and colleagues here on this committee will join me uh, in introducing that bill. Uh, there, are, there are torture victim centers in Ankara uh, and in other parts of, of, um, uh, of Turkey. Torture is endemic. I've held several hearings on the use of torture uh, and, and how, and I've raised it in Ankara and as chair of the OSCE Parliamentary Assembly, the, o the Helsinki Commission for short, uh, I will be in Baku tomorrow and will be meeting with members of the Turkish delegation and Mr. Chairman, I will put in each of those delegates' hands a copy of your resolution uh, and, and we will have a dialogue. Uh, friends don't let friends commit human rights abuses. Uh, let me also point out that Reporters Without Borders makes it absolutely clear, I've chaired hearings on this as well, uh, that the journalists, uh, they claim, and they have good substantive background for it, there are 42 journalists in prison suffering because they dared to write the truth uh, about what goes on or does not go on in Turkey. Uh, and, and especially if anyone mentions the Armenian Genocide, watch out. They'll be knocking on your door and, and it's off to the gulag for you. Uh, 72 media people in all, uh, let me also point out that I'll never forget, after George Bush, uh, first Bush after the Persian Gulf uh, War, kind of perhaps unwittingly suggested that we had the backs uh, for, for um, uh, the Kurds, and it looked like they were looking to, to overthrow and topple Saddam Hussein. Next thing you know, they were all in flight. Talking about refugees, when it comes to Syria, Turkey has very little choice in the streaming of refugees. And, and we congratulate them for providing uh, temporary housing and help for those who are coming across the border. But when the Kurds came across the border, uh, the line of, of demarcation between Turkey uh, and Iraq uh, was very strong. If it wasn't for our special forces, I say to my friends, colleagues, because we were there four or five days after all of these Kurds came to the border and couldn't get across, uh, we would have seen thousands of dead people who happened to be Kurds uh, from the elements, from sickness, and even from attack. Um, even while I was there, while we were there, a, a helicopter laden with foodstuffs for Kurdish refugees, women and children, and, and the elements were killing a lot of little children because uh, it was cold. Uh, when people went to get the meals ready to eat, one of the Turkish soldiers shot and killed uh, one of those who were just hungry beyond words. Uh, our military thankfully helped keep things in check. Their friends, their colleagues, uh, their friends, I should say, and allies. But we need to speak about human rights. And again, I think this very, very prudently written uh, uh, resolution uh, will make a difference. And we should not act out of fear, because then it, it invites uh, impunity and a sense that we can do whatever we want. Uh, and the Americans and, and others who concern about human rights uh, will muffle
sense that we can do whatever we want uh, and the Americans and, and others who are concerned about human rights uh, will muffle uh, their, their, their criticism. So again, Mr. Chairman, thank you for this resolution as well as the ranking member, uh, Elliot Engel. Would my friend yield for a minute? Yield. I, thank the, I thank my friend. My only point is I, I agree with him. We need to speak forthrightly about human rights uh, and abuses that may occur uh, and incursions in democracy. It's how we say it that is important. And I, I, respectfully, I, I, I respectfully believe that how this resolution is worded is, is, is going to be counterproductive. I understand it, but let I me just I, say, if I could reclaim or, or Mr. Royce's time, <laughs> um, <laughs> this is, I mean, the churches, the Christians there are under a constant cloud. The sword of Damocles hangs over them 24-7, uh, uh, seven days a week. This tells them we have their backs. And again, I think the chairman has crafted a resolution that is very diplomatically uh, uh, articulated, and uh, so I hope the members will support it. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to co-sponsor this bill. I think it's well destruction of Christian religious heritage in Turkey. This is a result of the Turkish government's uh, uh, desecration in some cases and just failure to protect in other, places, in other, in other cases Christian holy sites. Uh, because of this area's ancient history, so many of these churches are tied to an important global Christian heritage. Christians cannot legally train a clergy in Turkey and the ecumenical uh, patriarch, uh, patriarchate um, and the Armenian patriarchate are prevented from owning and transferring property. The U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom has listed Turkey as a serial violator of religious freedom for several years. The U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom reported, over the previous five decades, the Turkish state has, using convoluted regulations and undemocratic laws, uh, they have used these to confiscate uh, hundreds of religious uh, minority properties, primarily those belonging to the Greek Orthodox community as well as the Armenian Orthodox. Uh, the state has closed uh, seminaries denying these communities the right to, turn, uh, to train clergy. Despite a few public pronouncements vowing to return some religious property, as the uh, U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom reports, ad hoc announcements have not resulted in systematic changes in constitutional legal structures that would remedy violations of religious freedom for non-Muslim minorities, some of which are on the verge of virtual disappearance. Now, there is the argument that uh, Turkey will retaliate if anybody brings uh, any of this to their attention. Um, the fact is that France faced a similar issue about a decade ago when it decided when its parliament recognized on the parliamentary floor the Armenian genocide. That, as members of this committee know, is a much bigger issue with Turkey than this resolution. The French Parliament passed that resolution with France being under threat by Turkey to cut the one thing France cared about, which was trade and French ex exports. After the uh, French Parliament acted, French exports to Turkey tripled over the next uh, eight or nine years. So I don't think we should be dissuaded by bluffs, and I think this committee should at least show uh, the fortitude and courage of the French Parliament. Um, I, uh, if we can't do that, why are we here? Uh, I uh, would yield back to the chair unless uh, there's, uh, I will yield to the chair. Uh, so we have, um, before we, we, we have two uh, amendments, uh, Mr. Grayson and uh, Mr. Holding, that I was going to bring up on block, uh, but um, uh, Mr. Connolly, you referenced an amendment uh, that you have at the desk? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have Do a... you want to offer that, that amendment? Certainly. Okay. I have an amendment at the desk in the form of a substitute. The uh, clerk will report the amendment. Substitute for the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 4347, offered by Mr. Connolly of Virginia. Strike all after the enacting clause and insert the following. 
It is the sense of Congress that Turkey has made progress in ending religious discrimination and in returning church properties to their owners. It is further the sense of Congress that the Secretary of State and all official contacts with Turkish leaders and other Turkish officials should emphasize that Turkey should, one, endeavor to end all forms of religious discrimination, two, continue to make progress in allowing the rightful church and lay owners of Christian church properties without hindrance or restriction to organize and administer prayer services, religious education, clerical training, appointments, succession, religious community gatherings, social services, including ministry to the needs of the poor and infirm and other religious activities. Three, to continue the ongoing process being undertaken by the government of Turkey to return their rightful owners all Christian churches and other places of worship, monasteries, schools, hospitals, monuments, relics, holy sites, and other religious properties, including movable properties, such as artwork. With, without objection, um, the amendment will be considered read. Uh, all members now have a copy of the amendment. Uh, the chair recognizes the author to explain his amendment. I thank the chair. Um, this resolution is fairly simple. It, it recognizes progress has been made, but much progress needs to be done. It, I listened to my friend from California, Mr. Sherman, and I listened to my friend from New Jersey, Mr. Smith, and to listen to them would be to conclude, if one knew nothing else, that Turkey's apparently done nothing with respect to the return of Christian properties. Uh, the report cited actually also notes the return of 864 properties worth $1.5 billion. 2013, mass was held at Haji Yorgi Church for the first time in 89 years. Baptismal service was observed at the At Kamar Church of the Holy Cross for the first time in 100 years. Structures that have been restored, preserved, or begun restoring include the At Akmar Church of the Holy Cross, Serp Vortvats Voratman Church, St. Nicholas Church, Mor Petrus, Mor Paulus, uh, and, 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 and the Sahinimbi Synagogue, and I'm probably torturing the Turkic language here, uh, lands uh, associated with the Mor Gabriel Monastery have been returned, Hebeliada Theological School, Serp Giragos Church, Hagia Yorgi Church, Bamonti, uh, Mihit Tatarian Church uh, School and Galata Elementary School. Now, one could go on. Uh, we're, we're trying to achieve uh, a balance here where Turkey can work with the Christian communities to return Christian properties. I favor that. I voted for HRES 306. But that was something that brought us together because it didn't gratuitously just bash Turkey throughout the resolution. And I am concerned that that kind of gratuitous language is going to get us into a situation where the relationship is far more complicated and the goals we all seek, in fact, will be retarded rather than progress. Um, and so I'm urging my colleagues uh, to vote for uh, an alternative that expresses our sense of Congress with respect to the need for Turkey to have a lot more progress on the return of Christian properties but avoids um, language that I think can be construed as inflammatory and unnecessary at a very delicate moment in that region of the world. And I urge my colleagues to support the resolution. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Connolly. You know, I, I appreciate your amendment. I appreciate your perspective on these issues. I know that you've been deeply involved in this region of the world. Um, but I am somewhat disappointed because as members, I know myself and Mr. Engel have worked very hard making many changes to the introduced text and accepting changes from members yesterday. And we did that in an effort to get this legislation to a place where I hoped all members could support it. And of course, that's not always possible. But we did, we did make an effort, and in particular, we amended the base text from its original version to include findings that note instances of progress on church property returns to Turkey, as you referenced. We make note of the 2011 reforms to the law on foundations, which provide a process for churches to apply to get their properties returned. 
We also note that since the enactment of this reform, Turkey has returned over 300 properties to the appropriate church authorities. And further, clauses 23, 24, 25, clause 27, they all point to positive developments in terms of church property being returned, religious ceremonies being allowed, and the historic meeting between Prime Minister Erdogan and the ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew back in 2009. But while recognizing these positive developments, there is an urgency uh, on some of the issues that are before Turkey today. Progress on church returns, as everyone here knows, has been haphazard. It's been very slow. The 2014 U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom report notes many religious communities regard this process as biased and, of course, very, very slow. And it highlights that over 1,000 applications by churches to have their property returned have been denied. But that said, even more troubling, this is why this resolution is before us today. Since that time, two ancient Byzantine-era Orthodox churches, which had been seized by the Turkish government, rather than being returned to their rightful owners, have been converted into mosques. And there is a, pro as I referenced earlier, there is a proposal before the parliament now to do likewise with the um, Hagia Sophia, the great um, church in Istanbul. That is one of the most significant religious sites for Orthodox Christians in the world. It is the former Eastern Orthodox Cathedral and seat of the Patriarchate of Constantinople for a thousand years, and for decades has symbolized Turkey's efforts to respect the rights of Christian minorities while promoting the country's secular democracy. I am, and I know many other members, are pretty troubled by what this says about trends in Turkey. And we feel that if we take a stand, we may be able to arrest what would otherwise be a very unfortunate circumstance here. Turkey has not acted positively since we passed the last resolution. We cannot expect sudden progress if we pass the same uh, language again. We need to reference these discussions that are underway in Turkey and these events. And lastly, as to now is not a good time, that, that argument which we've heard, and I've partially answered that, but with all respect, uh, this to my own legislation here, we are just making a report. Second, there's never been and what has proven to be a bad time to raise it, if you think about it. This issue was raised, as I shared with you, by President Obama, and that was in 2009 when we were relying upon Turkey's support in isolating Iran and pressuring, pressing uh, Iran to abandon its nuclear ambitions. It was raised by the, our Vice President, Joe Biden, in 2011 when, Syri when the Syrian conflict was beginning. It was discussed once again a few months ago by Secretary Kerry on a visit to Turkey and Cyprus as the situation in Syria worsened and as ISIS was gaining greater influence in Iraq. At each of these times, I think it's fair to say, there was no breach in relations or cooperative efforts with Turkey on key U.S. foreign policy and security issues. It was raised because it was important that the United States take a stand. And as I said, Turkey is a mature, sovereign state. It measures its actions based on its calculation of what is in that state's best interests. When we have common interests, <laughs> Turkey will back us. When we don't, it won't. And thirdly, I'd ask, why are we so sensitive? Do we change our fundamental policies every time a foreign government critiques us? No. Maybe a report will be used as an excuse, but a report isn't going to tip that balance away 
from cooperative relations between the United States and Turkey, in my opinion. And I'm, I urge my colleagues to join me in opposing this amendment, and um, I recognize Mr. Engel. Well, well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I want to first of all uh, commend uh, Mr. Connolly. He's a good member of this committee and very thoughtful, and we generally agree on, on most things. But on this one, I have to respectfully disagree um, and, and, and oppose his, his substitute. Um, I know his intentions are very, very uh, well, very, very good. Uh, the question here, as, as the chairman has mentioned, Let's put this in perspective. What are we doing here? We're mandating a report. We're not taking any punitive actions against Turkey. We're not hitting them over the head. We're mandating a report. And I think that we need to put that in perspective. Um, the findings on our bill, the findings on the bill, the chairman's bill, is based on the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom report. It's also based on the State Department Human Rights Report. So we're taking two reports that have been issued, and we are, we are simply stating what these reports, which have already been done, are saying. Now, Turkey uh, can't, cannot have it both ways. You know, I'm, I am disturbed about recent trends in Turkey over the past several years by Mr. Erdogan. I am, I am very much uh, chagrined over what seems to be his authoritarian rule, his maneuverings to wipe away the, the secularism of the Turkish state, um, his attempts to um, neuter the military so that they are no longer a, a, a barrier in preventing um, the, the move uh, towards an Islamist uh, state in Turkey. Um, I think those are very troubling. And I think while Mr. Erdogan doesn't um, hesitate to tell the United States uh, when he thinks we're doing something wrong, um, I don't think that we should hesitate to tell him. And they can't really have it both ways. On the one hand, they say, well, we're an ally, so that should make you immune of any kind of criticism. On the other hand, when we look around and we've needed them, uh, they haven't always been there. Yes, they're an important country, but we're not denigrating that importance. We're simply saying that the findings in our bill are based on the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom and the State Department Human Rights Report. The other thing to put this bill in perspective, there are no sanctions or any penalty against Turkey in the bill. It's just a statement of what we believe is fact, which has been documented and proven about Christian properties. And so that's what we're doing. We're, 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 it's a finding, again, based on the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom Report, the State Department Human Rights Report, and we're not imposing any sanctions. So I don't uh, see uh, why uh, the chairman's bill should be opposed. We're, we're simply stating what's a fact. No one's disputing the facts. We're saying, well, Turkish sensitivities, uh, they may not like it. It's poking a finger in their eye. Well, you know what? We are entitled to, to say uh, what we feel and what we see. And uh, since there's... Uh, uh, we are mandating a report here. We're not imposing any sanctions here. Uh, I think this is a very uh, moderate, uh, moderate bill and should be supported by everyone on both sides of the aisle. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lowenthal. Thank you, <coughs> Thank you Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd like to say I want to speak against the substitute amendment from my dear colleague from uh, Virginia and speak in support of the underlying H.R. Uh, 4347. You know, one of the groups, a little background, one of the groups that I uh, belong to, in fact, that I'm proud to be a member of is the Tom Lantos Human Rights Commission. And last year, through the Commission's Defending Justice Project, I, I adopted a Vietnamese prisoner of conscience ma named Mr. Nguyen uh, Tien Trung. My role was to bring attention to Trung's plight, and I'm proud to say that recently Trung was released uh, from jail. And just this week, I adopted another prisoner of conscience in Vietnam, Pastor Nguyen Kong Chin. Pastor Chin was unjustly sentenced to 11 years <coughs> in prison in 2012 for simply practicing his faith and exercising his right to religious freedom. These cases have raised my awareness of religious intolerance around the globe. 
particularly in cases where it's systematically and institutionally practiced by various governments. The reason why we're here today and talking about this amendment and the underlying resolution is another sad situation where a government is actively hindering its own citizens' freedom of religion. There is no denying that the Republic of Turkey has a poor record on the treatment of Christians, and that's why the substitute amendment does not go far enough. Christian churches and communities in the Republic of Turkey and in northern Cyprus continue to be prevented from fully practicing their faith and face serious obstacles to reestablishing full legal, administrative, and operational control over stolen, expropriated, confiscated, or otherwise unreturned churches, uh, unreturned return churches and other religious properties and sites. It should be pointed out that in the three years since the Republic of Turkey revised its law to provide legal process for claims to the return of religious properties that it, ha that it has confiscated, that more than 300 Christian church properties have been returned. However, it is an encouraging sight, but with more than a thousand applications for the return of the properties being denied by the Turkish government, it is clear that much more needs to be done. The only way we're going to change this situation is to convince the Republic of Turkey that it's through, and that is through international pressure, and that's why I think this amendment does not really deal with the underlying factors, and I oppose the substitute motion and encourage the support of H.R. 4347, and I yield back. Hear, hearing no further um, requests for recognition. Oh, Mr. Cicilline. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I begin by saying I have... Um, tremendous uh, respect for the, uh, my colleague from Virginia, who I rely on a lot as a new member of this committee, a new member of Congress, uh, and admire his thoughtful approach to this issue and to all the work before our committee, but I must respectfully uh, oppose his amendment. Uh, I think it is correct that we have to be uh, careful about both what we say and how we say it. And this uh, underlying resolution or bill sends a message and creates a reporting requirement but the substitute amendment offered by the gentleman from Virginia, I think, makes assertions that just aren't true. It's the sense of Congress that Turkey has made progress in ending religious discrimination. We have the United States Commission for International Religious Freedom 2014 report, where they say Tur Turkey's, Turkish secularism, as codified in the 1982 Constitution, requires absolute state control over religion, which leads to governmental interference and restrictions that hinder full religious freedom in the country. The government limits all religious groups' rights to own and maintain places of worship, train clergy, and offer religious education. This has been particularly detrimental to the smallest minority communities and their ability to transmit their faith to future generations. Other concerns include the listing of religious affiliation on national identity cards, societal discrimination, anti-Semitism, and persistent religious freedom violations in the Turkish-occupied northern part of Cyprus. Finally, it should be noted that the overall landscape for democracy and human rights has deteriorated significantly during the past year. So I don't think we should express the sense of Congress that Turkey has made progress in ending religious discrimination. Um, in fact, the report goes on to say that they heard views from some religious minority communities that conditions had worsened and that the steps taken were negligible, as well as concerns that the improvements which are not codified in law could be easily revoked, especially in the current political environment. So I do think while some progress has been made on the return, or some efforts have been made on the return of property, that is reflected on page three, paragraph seven. The, the underlying resolution acknowledges that, but this is an opportunity for us to, to again state or to share our values, to, un to, to demonstrate that this is an important priority for our country, uh, an important shared value, and I urge my colleagues to reject the a substitute amendment and adopt the uh, uh, H.R. 4347 as originally proposed with the I yield back. Uh, hearing no further requests uh, for recognition, the vote now, the question occurs on the Connolly Amendment. Uh, all, those, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say uh, no. 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 Uh, in the opinion of the chair, the noes have it and the amendment's not agreed to. Uh, I now ask unanimous consent that the following two amendments that were provided to members yesterday be considered on block and considered read. Grayson, Grayson Amendment number 284 and the Holding Amendment number 851. Um, do any members seek recognition to speak on these amendments on block? Mr. Grayson. 
Thank you. With regard to my amendment, Mr. Chairman, I, it's simply a matter of making sure that the terms are accurate and that we, to the extent we can, avoid language that might be misconstrued by any party. That's the purpose of my amendment. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Grayson. Mr. Holding. Mr. Chairman, I thank you for recognizing me and want to thank you for all the work you've done advocating for religious freedom across the globe. It's certainly an issue that I know is of great importance to many members of this committee and members of Congress. Uh, in this committee, under your leadership and the leadership of Chairman Smith, we've had examined the plight of many across the world who are prohibited from freely and safely practicing the religion of their choosing. As part of a delegation to Turkey last year, I had the opportunity to meet with Christian church leadership while in Istanbul, and there I heard firsthand about the ongoing difficulties in the progress process to get church properties not only returned but correctly identified and inventoried. However, it was also expressed that while this process was not proceeding as expeditiously as it should be, the government of Turkey and local communities had been making strides and positive developments were noted. That being said, Mr. Chairman, it's certainly my belief and I believe the belief of many here today that more can and should be done to move this process in the right direction. While the base text before us today does note some of the positive developments, I believe more could be added to recognize some of the, these positive developments which is precisely what my amendment seeks to do. So I urge support, and I appreciate the chairman and ranking members um, support for my amendment. I yield back. Well, well thank you, Mr. Holding. I, I appreciate Mr. Grayson and uh, Mr. Holding's contribution. Um, and uh, the, the question now occurs on the Grayson and Holding amendments considered on block. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. In the opinion of the chairs, the ayes have it, and the amendments on block are agreed to. Um, are there any other amendments? Hearing no further amendments, the question occurs on adopting H.R. 4347 as amendment as amended. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chairs, the ayes have it, and the amendments unblocked are agreed to. Um, without objection, H.R. 4347 as amended is ordered favorably reported as a single amendment in the nature of a substitute. Staff is directed to make any technical and conforming changes.